Klaus came to the village for his summer holidays, just as usual, but his friend Dylan didn't meet him at the bus stop, and Klaus got very, very upset, because usually Dylan would meet him, and together they would ride around the village, as the guy knew that area perfectly, and always show Klaus the most interesting places. Hi, Grandpa! He really loved this rural life. Together with the old men, they were building birdhouses, tending the bees, collecting honey, repairing the old rickety fans, and roasting meat. Klaus decided to visit Dylan after a long and hard day to find out why his friend hadn't met him. He lived on the neighboring street. An old lady opened the door. Hello, is Dylan at home? You must leave, or he will come for you. Klaus was confused. This crazy grandfather was talking nonsense again. He went back home, sat down on the couch, and started watching TV. Suddenly, Dylan knocked on the window. Klaus cheerfully ran out into the street. Where have you been? We were playing hide and seek, and I got lost. It was already quite dark outside, but the guys decided to go for a walk anyway. Dylan offered to take a boat ride. The dock watchman was already asleep, so they could quietly sneak there, got into the boat and sailed down the river. Turned out that there were no paddles in the boat, they couldn't row and ran into a stone. The guys ended up in the water, and it was fortunate that the shore was pretty close. Klaus was surprised. You didn't know how to swim. How could you swim? If you want to live, you'll learn anything. The guys went upstream in search of their village. Their clothes were wet, they were freezing and wanted to eat. Suddenly, light flashed among the trees. It was someone's house. Dylan suggested to go inside and check everything. They knocked on the door, but no one answered. Then Klaus pushed the door. It wasn't locked. Hey, is there anyone here? Nobody responded, and the guys decided to take a break and have something to eat. But they could only find a piece of rotten bread in the refrigerator. It was getting scary. Klaus thought that he had already seen this house somewhere. Let's get out of here. The front door was locked. Shutters began to close all over the house. The candles went out. Klaus turned around and Dylan was gone. Buddy, are you here? Someone's silhouette flashed on the second floor. Probably it was Dylan. Klaus thought that he might have decided to play some stupid game. The old ladder broke. Klaus hit his head hard and fainted. He woke up in a soft bed. A glass of hot milk rested next to the nightstand. Klaus jumped out of his bed. He saw a scroll inscription on the wall. Be quiet, or she will come after you. He wasn't funny anymore. Dylan, you better stop this stupid joke. Someone's footsteps and a creepy laugh resounded. Klaus decided to hide under the bed, just in case. A scary grandma entered the room. She looked just like the one from Granny's game. Is it really her? The boy remembered how he played this game at the most difficult level. Now it was clear why this house was so familiar to him. Ah, oh, naughty boy, he didn't drink milk again. She walked out of the room. Klaus was totally trembling. He had to get out of this house. When he looked out in the corridor, Dylan ran up to him and said that when it got dark in the house, he got scared and hid under the stairs. He found some strange door next to him. Maybe it was the way out. But Klaus explained to his friend that he needed to look for the right items to get out and to not make any noise. They went into the bathroom and found a key in the toilet. Then Klaus took his friend to the first aid kit and they opened it with this key. There laid a crossbow and syringes with sedatives. The sounds of Granny resounded again. She was approaching them. Dylan grabbed the crossbow and started shooting, but never hit. The guys ran down. They found themselves in the basement. There was a passage behind the boxes. They crawled through the tunnel and ended up in the barn. In that place, Klaus found a handle from the well, and he could lift the bucket using it. They were quite lucky to find the wire cutters in that bucket. How do you know all this? Everything is like in the granny game, and this crone is the same. Dylan felt sad. It was a shame that he never played computer games. 
They climbed back into the house through the window and found a hammer in one of the boxes. Klaus asked his friend to rip off the boards when they were in the central hall, but the clumsy Dylan touched the rope and the bell rang. Granny heard everything and followed the sounds. They quickly ran in the different directions. Klaus found himself in the basement again. He opened the flap and cut the wire of the electric lock of the main entrance. Granny was already going down the ladder to catch him, but he managed to crawl into the passage next to the box and ran to the place with the syringes. He then loaded the crossbow and walked boldly into the hall. Granny saw the guy. She wanted to climb the stairs again, but Klaus put the villain to sleep with a well-aimed shot. While she was laying on the floor, he picked up a hammer, tore off the board and ran to look for other things. There was a gear in the ventilation behind the fan in the attic. Klaus cut the wires and took the thing he needed. He also checked the next room with a baby cot. Someone's skeleton laid in the cot and there was a note in the hand. Klaus grabbed the note. Granny hadn't woken up yet. He ran downstairs and managed to rummage through several more boxes and find a second gear and a watermelon. He then ran out into the street. Dylan was hiding in the corner again. Klaus put the watermelon into the guillotine, cut it open and got the key to the booth. Let me help you! Klaus opened the booth. Dylan crawled inside and began to insert these gears. But as if on purpose, he did everything incredibly slowly. Klaus started yelling at him. Granny woke up and walked in their direction. Then Klaus pulled the loser out of the booth, climbed in and inserted the gears. The mechanism worked. The boy received the red key. He climbed out of the booth. Let's run, quick! No, friend, I can't. Don't leave me here. Klaus simply couldn't understand what kind of nonsense he was talking about. Granny went outside and tried to attack him, but Klaus was smarter. He jumped in the window, opened the last lock on the door and ran out to freedom. Disgruntled Granny stood there waving after him. In the distance, the boys saw the lights. It was the villagers. Together with his grandfather, they were looking for him throughout the forest. Klaus! Hurry up! Dylan is there! We must save him! The old man was confused. He told the boy that about a year ago, Dylan went to play hide and seek in the forest with other kids. And that was the last time somebody saw him. Klaus led them to the house. The villagers searched all the rooms. And indeed, there was a skeleton in the attic. They had to call the police and take the remains for examination to find out who it was. Klaus and his grandfather returned home. The boy felt tired and lay down to rest. He remembered about the note in the dead man's hand, unfolded it and began to read. I hope someone will find this note. Most likely, I'll be dead by that time. The crazy grandmother doesn't let me out of her house. I hid in the attic. I have no food or water. Goodbye. Regards, you're Dylan. Klaus was shocked. How could this happen? and why Dylan's ghost had brought him there and didn't want him to run away. He felt someone's gaze on him. Dylan was standing in the window and calling him somewhere. The morning bus rushed at full speed from the village to the city. During the whole trip, the frightened Klaus was peering out the window to see if Dylan's ghost was following him. Klaus, are you back already? His parents were quite surprised that their son came from his grandfather's in the middle of the holidays. He really loved spending time in the village. But they were late for work and didn't have time to ask what happened. As soon as the door closed behind them, Klaus called his friend Marta and invited her to come over. The girl lived just nearby, so she came right away. What happened? You're all out of your face! Klaus locked the door with a double lock, braced it with a cupboard, closed all the blinds on the windows and told Marta about his terrible adventure in the village. He told her how country boy Dylan lured him into the mad granny's house, how that crone 
chased after him and how he managed to escape. And then Dylan came to him again to apologize for framing him and said that it was this granny who made him play this dirty trick. Klaus was frightened to death, cause Dylan looked like a dead man. As a gesture of reconciliation, Dylan gave Klaus a bear. The boy grabbed this toy, stormed out and caught the first bus to the city. Martha found the whole story funny, she didn't believe her friend. A video game cannot be real. But this teddy bear really looks like the one from the third chapter of Granny. But I haven't finished playing the game yet. You can have it, since you like it so much. Martha went home. Klaus felt very upset that she didn't believe him. The phone call interrupted his thoughts. He picked it up, but no one was talking. Only quiet cries were coming from the phone. He thought it was Martha trying to prank him, so he laughed and hung up the phone. But it kept ringing and ringing. Klaus freaked out. He didn't like the stupid joke at all. The boy felt really bored being at home. He remembered about this third chapter of Granny, downloaded it and spent the whole night trying to win it. As he played, he found the same teddy bear and it turned out that he needed to return this toy to Slendrina's child in order to complete the game. Klaus wondered mm. if this could be Slendrina who called and cried on the phone. The boy thought that he needed to tell everything to Martha as soon as possible. Petrolmen stood all around her house. They were questioning the neighbors and examining the area. Apparently they were searching for the traces of the criminal. Klaus tried to enter his friend's apartment, but the policeman said that a crime had been committed in this apartment and that it was not possible to come inside. Klaus was worried. He was wondering what could have happened in Martha's apartment. He went around the house, moved the boxes and got closer to the window. Her mother was telling the police that when she arrived, the apartment looked shabby and old in some sense. All the things were scattered around and Martha was laying in the kitchen with a knife in her hands. The woman called an ambulance and quickly packed her daughter's belongings. Now the girl was in a hospital in a critical condition. Klaus was shocked. Could it be that Slenderina came for a bear? He went to visit Martha to find out what had happened. A police officer was on duty in front of her room. I want to visit a friend. No one can visit her until we clarify what happened to her. But Klaus didn't plan to give up that easily. He bought diuretic pills at the pharmacy, went to the nurse and asked her to make some tea for the tired officer. Why wouldn't he ask himself? He's on duty, madam, looking after the injured girl. He cannot be absent. The disgruntled nurse made the tea and rolled the car down the corridor. Klaus approached her with a stupid question, asking where he could find the library. And the moment she got distracted, threw a diuretic peel right into the tea. The nurse brought the cup to the policeman. He was quite surprised by such a good service and of course could not refuse the tea. Klaus observed everything from around the corner. The officer emptied the mug and began to fuss. It was obvious that he wanted to pee. He could not hold it any longer and ran to the toilet. Klaus got into Martha's room. She could hardly speak. But it was obvious that she saw Slenderina and tried to defend herself. But Slenderina was stronger. I'm sorry that I didn't believe you. Klaus told his friend that in that game, Slenderina wanted to get this bear too. So apparently she came for it in reality. Martha asked him to check her bag. The bear was still there. So it must be that Slenderina hasn't calmed down yet. Suddenly, the boards got nailed on the hospital's windows. The main light went out. When the emergency lights came on, the place looked completely different. Loud shouts resounded behind the doors. It must have been Slendrina attacking the patients. When everything calmed down, Klaus looked out into the corridor. It was completely empty. He quietly went to search for painkillers. 
On the way, he met the surgeon. He was writhing in pain because his leg was stuck in a trap. He told Klaus that the necessary medicines were in his cabinet in the operating room and gave him the necessary key. Klaus crawled on. Slandrina's grandfather was laying on the couch in the operating room. He carefully opened the cabinet and found extra strength painkillers and soporific. He wanted to inject the old man with soporific, but that policeman distracted him and Klaus missed. The old man woke up and started shooting in different directions. Klaus crawled back, gave painkillers to the surgeon, then returned to Martha's room and injected her with a full syringe. Martha felt better right away and managed to get out of her bed. What do we do now? We must give this bear to Slendurina and then get out of here. The old man wandered along the corridor. They hid under a dirty laundry cart and quietly rolled towards the elevator. The old man couldn't understand how the cart was rolling on mm. its own. They got into the elevator and went down on the first floor. No one was in there, so the guys rushed to the central exit, but they stumbled on the door locked with bolts and locks. They backed away. Martha accidentally hit the signal trap. The bell rang and they heard Granny's voice. The guys scattered in different directions from fear. Klaus ran into the maternity ward. Slenderina was staring at the babies, but suddenly she grabbed the boy and started beating him against the wall. The children woke up from that noise. Slenderina couldn't bear the screams and Klaus managed to escape from her. In the corridor he bumped into Granny. She was just about to hit the guy, but a surgeon appeared. A powerful battle ensued, but the blows with a sharp scalpel couldn't harm Granny in any way, and she defeated the brave man. Somehow Slenderina managed to crawl out of the maternity ward. While Granny was calling her, Klaus hid in the morgue. He heard a weird sound there, as if someone was freezing. He began to open the refrigerators and a frozen Martha laid in one of them. Klaus brought the poor girl to the basement on a gurney, where they could warm up by the crematorium. In the hallway, he threw a syringe with soporific right at Granny, and Slenderina started chasing after them. They rushed down the stairs, flew into the basement at high speed, and turned over. Slenderina grabbed Martha, but Klaus quickly came up with a plan. He lifted the bear and attracted the monster's attention. Slenderina saw him throwing the toy directly into the oven and tried to catch the bear. Klaus shut the iron door and the heartbreaking screams resounded. What are we gonna do next? We're trapped here! There was a lot of junk in the basement and Klaus suggested building the traps. They gathered everything they needed and went upstairs. Granny was no longer there. It gave them the opportunity to arrange a surprise for the monsters. They ambushed near the elevator, sent it upstairs and opened the doors. While they were installing the spring, Granny approached them from behind and grabbed Martha. One trap worked right at this moment and they both flew into the elevator shaft. Klaus rushed to help, but the old man stopped him. An emergency happened today. The city hospital was taken over by the monsters from the granny game. Nobody knows how they appeared in Roblox. Currently, the staff of the SCP fund is interrogating the old man, but so far everything has been fruitless. Also, a survived teenager was found in the hospital. The SCP fund provided the guy with treatment at its own expense as well as with the new, ultra-modern prosthesis created on the basis of Thief Crawler Hand. Granny and Martha were seen falling into the elevator shaft on the surveillance cameras, but their bodies were not found. The director of the SCP Fund suspects that Granny kidnapped the girl for her own purposes. Klaus knew where to look for Martha, but didn't tell the detectives about it because he wanted to fight his enemies himself.
Martha woke up in the bed. Dylan stood right next to her, offering her to drink some milk. Just take a sip, and you will feel better. Martha knocked the glass off and rushed to the exit. It was that exact house from the game that Klaus were telling her about. The door was shut. Now you will take my place, and Granny will let me rest in peace. <laughs> Granny's laughing resounded. She was approaching them. Martha burst into tears. Granny began to beat the girl with her club mercilessly. Klaus kicked the door down and tore off Granny's head in one fell swoop. The SCP Fund director's plan worked well. They upgraded Klaus purposefully, and then followed him everywhere he went. Dylan's body was finally buried, and his soul found peace. They took Klaus' upgraded hand away and replaced it with a safer prosthesis. After that, they scanned him and Martha as well. The suspicious cell activity was detected in the girl, but they didn't pay any attention to that. The old man was imprisoned for life in the SCP fund. The guys returned to their normal lives after that story. They played the computer games, walked a lot and rode their bikes. But Klaus began to notice one strange thing. Martha seemed to start getting older. The wrinkles appeared on her face. Her voice began to be hoarse. What's going on with you, Martha? 